Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to continue the pipe rack build or sawhorse build, whatever you want to call them. We're going to be saddling lots of four and a half inch pipe and I'm going to share with you a couple of tips that I have on saddling pipe with a template. If it's your first time using a template, you might get frustrated sometimes and think, man, this template ain't worth a darn, doesn't fit. Well, I'm gonna help you with that today. If you're new around here, my name is Austin Ross. I've been a welder for about 15 years. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders. If you don't know about the A-Ross Welding website or the A-Ross Welding Inner Circle, go check those out. The Inner Circle is kind of like a social network for welders, more or less, small business owners, etc. All right, here's the deal. So we got two pieces welded up so far, and they're both 14 foot long instead of 12 foot long. If you missed last week's video, we'll put a link in the description. We started this, uh, what I'm gonna call pipe rack situation, it's a triangle thing. I drew it on the concrete, Kevin interrupted us. You can check out last week's video to catch up. We're essentially making a triangle, but I had to weld some four and a half inch pipe together to get the length I needed. So I've got two welded up, and before I weld up any more, I need to figure out my height that I want. And so I've been over here brainstorming. I like the thought of three foot. So not only am I gonna be using these triangles to hold pipe right now in the future i may use them to set like an old feeder on farm project or anything that comes through the door a container i can put a container up on it and i can work on the bottom of something i can throw a trailer upside down i can just it's nice to have a couple things like this to work on projects um, up off the ground stuff that doesn't have to be level necessarily of course if i have them set up on this level of concrete then there's a good chance it may be level but my whole point is, is these things are going to be useful for more than just a pipe rack, which I'm gonna be using them for right now. All that to say is I'm trying to decide the height, and I like 36, that's 36, but I could probably get away with, oh, like 30, I like 30 also. 30's not too shabby, but I also have to consider what drops I have over there. That may determine my height, because if I have a lot of drops that are a certain length, I may just go with that certain length, but I just always like to get an idea, so. Hypothetically, if we go with 30 inches, to get our length, I need to minus nine inches because four and a half inch pipe, four and a half plus four and a half is nine inches. So 30 minus nine, minus nine, well 10 is 20, so plus one inch, 21 inches is all I'll need for pipe, except we gotta add our ears because the pipe that's going in between these is gonna be saddled like so. So you gotta add your ears and to do that, find a four and a half inch saddle from Dilly Whopper. Four and a half, check it, make sure. And then I need to measure how long my ears are. So from here to here, because right now we got 21 inches from the inside to the inside of our saddle, but we need to add our ears. And an accurate way to do that is take your template to a table, set it on here like so, measure here, holding it as still as possible, measure here until this is even, till you got the same distance from the table to your throat. And then whenever you've got the same distance on each side, that's how you know how much to add for your ears. So in this case, we got about an inch and three eighths. Inch and three eighths. Inch and three eighths it is. So 21 plus an inch and three eighths plus another inch and three eighths for the other side of our Dilly Whopper there. So 21, uh, several different ways of doing this. The way I like to do it is inch and three eighths times two. One and one is two, and then three eighths and three eighths is three quarter. So two and three quarter plus 21, one, two, and three quarter. So 23 and three quarter is our measurement. Now I'm gonna go measure my drop pieces in my short rack. We got 37, that's plenty long enough. So anyway, I'm gonna go through here so I don't bore you to death. I'm gonna go through here and kind of tally up what I have in the minimums. And uh, I may or may not go with that exact measurement of 23 inches and three quarters. Either way, it'll be around that range. That's how high our, our pipe racks will be. And again, if you missed last week's video, it's for all this. Essentially where these pieces running this way, there's some two and seven eighths pipe in there. I'm gonna pick all this up and I'm gonna put a stand here and a stand down there. Final answer, 12 foot long and roughly 30 foot, or not 30 foot, 30 inches off the ground. Triangles, pipe racks, AKA saw horses for projects.
look at the difference in these so far. The wall thicknesses. See how much thicker this one is than these two? And this one's pretty thick. So one thing I wanted to point out is that's half the reason why these templates seem to be quote unquote off. If you're like new to saddling and you get these and you saddle stuff and it doesn't doesn't fit just right, it's because of the wall thickness. Like in this situation, for one, I've got slag that is in the way, but also just this wall thickness here is affecting how the cross piece fits. Look who is here today, not doing a darn thing. Oh, Karen, she's been laying low. Oh, Kev's been taking the spotlight lately. I don't even see him. He's probably sleeping on hay bales in the calf shed down there. 23. Three quarter. Ooh, that one's a little short. Uh row raggy. So, uh, we got inch and three eighths from the end. And three eight, 22 and three eighths is now what we just changed our measurement to. Ebbing and flowing, baby. Ebbing and flowing. Call this freestyling fab, you know? All right, now that I've got my length marked on all my pieces, I'm now gonna make the saddle on the other end, but I wanna make sure my saddles are lined up with each other. And you can do one of two things. One way is to just eyeball it. That's what I've done here. I just stood at the end and rolled it and eyeball it and I've made a mark on each end. Or if I would've remembered, whenever I had this template on to cut these first ones, I could've just made a mark right here on my template where these two pieces meet. And that would've kept my center of my saddle. Once that's marked, I take a center finder and put on the mark that I've made, making sure this is seated good. And then I roll the pipe, which it's pretty close to being level. Also making sure you're, you're zeroed in here on your, on your dial. And then once that's level, I'm gonna take this to this end. And then now I'm gonna leave the pipe. I'm not gonna roll it, but I'm gonna roll the center finder itself till it's level. And then once it is level, you can either take a hammer and tap it, or with this particular center finder, I can actually reach my mark with soapstone. And then I can go ahead and spin it around here so y'all can see what's going on. Where I made that crow's foot, where my center finder was at, I'm going to make sure it's lined up with where these two pieces meet on my template. And then where my measurement is, I'm going to make sure it's right here lined up with my throat. And now I can go ahead and mark my other saddle to kind of compensate for the wall thickness. Whenever I get up here, these ears, I kind of go on, uh, kind of go on this side of the line. And then whenever I get to about right here, I start going back to that side of the line in my throat. That'll help with a little bit of, of the, uh, wall thickness save you a little bit of grinding hopefully if you do happen to be doing the same thing I'm doing by using this uh, your pipe as a table like I'm doing and you're having difficulty cutting because this thing wants to keep rocking, you can always get a couple of jack stands like I hit, had back here and set your piece in jack stands. That'll help with uh, keeping it a little more, a little more steady. I'm keeping it steady with this hand and I've got it up against my, my left handle down here. junk piece which is this short piece here and drag it into my line start out here drag into my line and then take off I'm 
also trying to keep my torque perpendicular to my pipe. It doesn't have to be necessarily, but I just, I try to keep it that way. In other words, I try to keep this number versus keeping it, like whenever I come around here, versus keeping it angled. But sometimes, depending on your experience, it may be hard to to roll the wrist to keep your torch head 90. So sometimes you tend to do this number, which I still do, like whenever I'm coming around here, if I can't focus on rolling my wrist, I'll just keep it at an angle a little bit. But my goal is to always try to keep it 90 with the with the pipe all the way around. But it, with pipe, it's, it's a continuous change of angle and that's why I mean it's all kind of all in the wrist you know practice 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 I'm cross over the line right here on the line then I'm on this side of the line up here on my ears Cross right back over. Just a little. You don't have to do all that. It's just a little thing that kind of helps a little bit. Potentially save you some grinding. And... Threads on this one. I don't love that. But. Let's see what type of wall thickness is left. Also makes her more difficult to follow the line. That makes me dizzy. Kind of just start guessing. See, that's giving me trouble there.
right, so I've started to grind all these pieces with a four and a half inch sanding pad. And all I'm doing is laying it back, but depending on the wall thickness will depend on whether you have to grind it or not. This is three eighths, maybe a little bit less. But anyway, I just wanted to show you what it looks like before we even take a grinder to it, which as you can see here, there's some slag on the inside and how bad of fit that it is. You're looking at roughly a half inch gap on each side in your ears. And then on this next example, I took a grinder and just knocked that slag off, but I didn't lay, any, didn't lay anything back. And you know, you're looking at, it's a lot better. It's definitely weldable. Um, probably about a quarter inch right here and right here, but still not the best that it could be. And then you got the one where we've laid it back with our sanding pad on each side. Fits a lot better. So depending on the wall thickness and size of pipe, like on two inch, for instance, with something like this wall thickness around three eighths or five sixteenths, two inch, this length here, all of a sudden it's way smaller. So it's less of a big deal, more or less what I'm saying. So like on two inch on fence, I might go ahead and weld this, but on four and a half inch this thick, I'm gonna take the time to do this number. At the end of the day, all this is kind of just personal preference, but I just, you know, and, and what you're used to, but I'm, I'm kind of an advocate for shooting for perfection, just because as long as, it's an imperfect world, so it's never gonna be absolutely perfect, but if you're shooting for perfect, you're just naturally gonna get better quality, so. All right, now that we got all our pieces cut and cleaned up, next thing I'm gonna do is make sure, double check, make sure this is level. And then it also needs to be square. And then I'm gonna put one of the pieces here, one in the center, and one on the end. there's you know less gaps possible all the way around um, but I what I've done to square this up is for one you can kind of eyeball it by having this piece in as long as this piece is square and your your marks are lined up the five inches that we come in on on each side as long as everything's lined up in theory it should be pretty close but to make sure we took our center finder and we put a center punch on top of these marks here and then we cross measure I'm gonna check for square one more time and then go ahead and tack these off. And actually, before I tack them off, I need to put my center one in there. Oh my. All right, we got her all tacked up. The next thing that I gotta figure out is how I'm going to put my next pieces on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have another one here and another one here. 
and then another long member right on top and that's going to be our triangle pipe rack slash sawhorse situation this is my first time building such a thing i've seen a lot of these over the years but i've never actually built one so i've got a couple of ideas but i'm not sure how i'm going to do it stay tuned for next week to find out how i'm going to go about finishing this pipe rack thank you for joining me today don't forget to check out the aros welding website the aros welding inner circle or anything else that we may have there on the aros welding website hope this video was helpful again thank you for joining me thank you for all your support if you have any questions you can text them to 405-643-7176 hope you all have a great weekend and remember learn something every day